week was test tiles. Second week is planning the process. Uh, this week is not a whole lot of hands-on with the glazing because I really had to sit down and think and plan. Once I get all my glazes out, I want it to just go bang, bang, bang. I want to be able to make it flow, and I only want to do it one time, and I need to know what result I'm looking for on each tile for each type of glaze. Um, I'll share that process with you, what I, I am hoping to do with, with, the, um, with the test tiles. Also, I came up with my chart on how I'm going to keep track. Every test tile had a number on the back, so each like number one, I'll, I, I know exactly what a number one tile is. Uh, so it's just not a whole lot of hands-on, but I did a lot of hands-on work because my tiles have to dry. Plus, I'm not firing a $20 load for test tiles that take up this much space. I need to fill my kiln. Worked on some things this week, so I'll share a throwing video at the end, you know. Hopefully it turned out. I haven't even looked to see if the video itself turned out, but um, I'll throw a little bit of the throwing video. And also, I went to two different galleries, the Art Walk I just got back about five minutes ago, and um, I had, I'm in two galleries downtown. Well, I'm in a window in the Chartreuse Muse. I'm so excited. And I have two, I put the three uh, pictures that I had, the sculpture-looking pic pictures, in the Mislin Art Gallery downtown. So I'll share photos of that. I didn't take videos. I just... I was going to, I was going to, I can sit in here and talk normal, but if I'm in a group setting, I can't walk around and go, hey, you know, start taking videos and talking to myself. Anyway, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed today's clip, and next week I'm going to actually get my hands down and dirty, and I'm going to glaze everything that I have so I can do, I might even have to do two kiln loads for it, so next week will be glazing, and the week after will be results. So there's my four weeks, and hope you guys enjoy it, like I said, and we will get started. Okay, before I even started, I wanted to make sure I understood um, color schemes. And the reason is, is because it's very simplistic. They have complementary uh, and all the, the different ways that you can mix color, you know, and, and get different colors. Uh, go ahead and find a, a color wheel and print that out. So, and one that works for you. This one seemed to work for me and I understood it, but they have a whole lot of different other ones that you can go to. Just type in uh, color wheel in Google and hit images and you'll find pretty much whatever you need in there that'll suit you. But it, it's going to be a quick reference for me in case I need to say, okay, what happens when you mix this and this together? So that's what I needed to know. Okay, everything that I'm going to share here, I actually have on my blog, and I've, I've listed it out. It was partially to help me remember my, my criteria that I needed, but also, in case anybody wants to reference it, you don't want to have to watch a video. You can just print it out and take it into your workshop if it's something you want to use. Um, but what I'm going to do right now is I had some criteria that was mandatory. One of them is I need to make sure that the glazes I am mixing together are all of the same cone. Uh, I'm going to do everything in a cone 5. These are cone 5 glazes. Um, so these are fine. Also, I wanted to make sure that they're the same brand. These ones are Speedball. I actually have more Amico, but these little bottles work better for the video. <laughs> so that's why I grabbed them. But I really do have, I have a, a, a pretty good variety of Amico glazes. I have um, Duncan glazes. I have, uh, like I said, the Speedball. I have... Um, uh, I'll show you when I get to them. But anyway, they need to be the same brand. Also, I'm going to work in quarter ratios. And I, well, first of all, I was thinking, oh, you know what, I'm just going to mix half and half. If I can do half and half, I will. But some glazes may be runny, and some may also be uh, too dominant in one color. And I think if you were to add them together, it would be a mushy brown. So I, I'm, I'm going to do them in quarter ratios so that I can keep an easier process for me to measure. Um, so those are my criteria. Same cone, same brand, and I'm going to work in quarters. So if I do halves, then I'm working in two quarters. Get it, two quarters. Okay. Now, first what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the basic colors. I'm going to have make a test strip of this color and a test strip of, of all the other colors. I have to have a solid sample of it before I mix it. What I'm going to do, the criteria for the basic color sample is I need one, two, and three coats. So I'll do one two, and three. Then I'm going to also take it onto the back and I'm going to put one coat back here and wipe it off because that's my wash inside here. All right. Um, then I'm going to take the basic colors and I'm going to make a test tile 
that has black. Now I'm using this as representation because my gloss is actually in a bucket. But here's my black and here's my white. I'm going to use a tint and a shade. So I'm going to take this color a little lighter with white and then I'm going to take this color a little lighter. I mean a darker with black. Okay. And what the mixed basics will be is my sample strip. Well let's say I've already done this one is my basic. And this one is my mixed basic which is tint or shade. I'm going to take that and um, I'll have one strip of the standalone color. Even, actually, even if I mix it, basic and mixed ones will be the same. I'll have a solid strip of the standalone color, which might be in the center. And then I'm going to have a sample strip of the tint and a sample strip of the, the shadow. And I'll, I'll try and do them on the same side, if I remember correctly. Then I'm going to take that again and do my wash on the back. Now. For the basic color, I already have a wash, but if I mix this, and now let's say I'm going to go over here, now it's time to mix it with a different glaze. Of course we did the white and the black, but let's say I'm going to mix this yellow and this blue together. I look at this, one's transparent and one is solid, it's um, opaque. Okay, so what do I want to do? I think this one I would do half and half, because one that's transparent, I just want to see what will happen. So this one I'm going to do 50-50, bang, I've mixed these together, now we have a new color. Okay, now I have a new tile for this one. This is a whole brand new color. All right, and I need to do one with three layers, bunk, 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 like the first one, and a wash on the back with just this color. Okay, then I need another test tile because I'm going to do the tint and the shade for this mixed color. So I'm going to do uh, tint, the basic color in the center, so I have a reference point, and then the shade on the side. Then I'll do a wash on the back, even though I've, I'll have two sets of washes for that. So anyway, that is the process that I'm going to be doing for making the test tiles. It took me a long time to come up with that. I really explained it a whole lot quicker than it went, but um, that's my criteria that I'm doing. Then I'll fire them all to cone 5 and see how it goes. Blindfolds, but I just don't do that. So, hey.